Oh hey, didn't see you there. Hey guys, Brian here. So uh, today we're going to talk about electronics. And there is uh, a lot of information online about how to do what I'm doing here. But I want to go over some of the things that are going to specifically apply to the print NC. So I do want to preface this with uh, I am no expert by any of this. I just started digging into this a couple days ago. So, uh, however, I have learned a couple things along the way that I think might help some other people, either setting up uh, the breakout board to the drivers, to the motors, or if you're, you know, building the print and C build specifically. Now, I know this might be a lot to look at. However, there will be schematics posted. I'll, I'll try to draw up a schematic of my uh, exact system here, but there are uh, quite a few schematics of the breakout board, how to wire up the drivers, and then the motors to the drivers as well. So I will do my best to link as much as I can in the description. Now this is just a test bench here. I wanted to get, you know, get tape on the motors. With uh, my MPC and C, I actually just threw the motors on the machine and went to town, but I feel like uh, I wanted to get things, you know, set up on the bench here before I moved it over to the, uh, to the machine. So real quick, I'll just do a, uh, a quick overview of the parts and then we'll we'll get into the details here. So this is a, a Dell Optiplex 780. I got it on uh, market, Facebook Marketplace for like 40 bucks. Even had an SSD in it. But the, uh, the big kicker here is that it has a parallel port. And that is gonna be this guy right here. So this is what we're gonna use to connect to the breakout board. And then I also have a, a Type A this is a type A to a type A cable for the breakout board. And this will come with the breakout board. So the uh, I do have two power supplies on the bench here. The left one here is a 24 volt power supply. And this is powering the board itself. And then I also have the 36 volt power supply which is powering the motors. And so you can see here we're coming off the power supply and going right into the right hand side of the of the uh, the driver here. So not only will you need the 24 volt power supply to power the uh, breakout board, but you'll also need this 5 volt input here. And uh, that is going to go to this uh, enable uh, wire here. And we can get into that more later. But if you don't have the 5 volts here, you're only going to get like 1.5 volts on uh, this enable pin and your motors will act a little funky. Ask me how I know. So we'll kind of just move left to right here, but the uh, the breakout board here is, you know, it's parallel input and it is pretty standard. So if we look over on the uh, pins here, the left hand side is going to be our limits. And these are actually going to one of my inductive limit switches, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, I'll include a schematic for this guy here. So you, you will have to wire this up depending on your own build. And the cool part about the breakout board here is that you basically just have a bunch of pins in here that break out directly to our output pins here. You know, there's no drivers to worry about with USB, no software to worry about. It's just a 100% mechanical connection, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, we'll see if I can re remember this off the top of my head. But on the left-hand side, we have the limits. And so this is my X, Y1, Y2, and Z limits on the left here. And that's my, my input for the limits. So these, uh, these bottom pins are actually gonna go to my uh, separate axes. So the first two are for X, then we go Y1, and then Z, and then Y2. And last but not least, here is our, our uh, 24 volts power coming into the side here. So these guys here are the, what, TB6600s, I believe. And I know that they're everyone's favorite. Uh, a lot of guys will upgrade to uh, I forget the model number at the moment, but it's a little bit bigger driver. I might do that down the road, but these will still be wired up the same. So I'm basically got our four wires to the motor going into the driver here, and then our power coming in, 36 volt. And uh, we also have some of our signal wires here. So on the right hand side of the driver here, we have our four motor wires. And just a quick recap, the black and green wires are, are one pole, and then the red and blue wires are another pole. And from what I've read, these are not standardized wires, so your stepper motor might be different. The, uh, so that it is good to double check. Uh, one thing you can do is when you have the motor disconnected, you can 
short the black and green wires or any any two wires and if you short the two together just pinch them together and then physically turn the shaft of the motor it will be very hard to turn you'll feel a, 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 a big increase in resistance and that's because the the coils are shorted together and they're creating that magnetic field so that is how, that's how you know what pair is for which and you can see here I have uh, an A pole and a B pole so if you if you like you can you can uh, you know try to copy what I did here and then that way your configuration will be similar at least so we, we come out of the driver and go into the stepper motor here and I, I put flags on the shafts that way you could see them spin a little bit easier so uh, what I have here the layout this is my my Z my X my Y1 and my Y2 so that just kind of laid things out in the same way as the stepper motors and the drivers as well so uh, one thing to mention is that depending if your x-axis is on the left or right side you will want this to spin clockwise or counterclockwise uh, so just kind of keep that in mind and once you get everything working you'll have to make sure that your rotations are correct so it's not a big deal it's easy to change in uh, in software so if you want you can wire up all your motors the same way and then just change everything in software which might be the best way to go and then lastly here I have my inductive limit switches and these guys here are powered off of 24 volts and you can see the light here the light will turn off when it hits something metal and it works for aluminum and steel this is a small piece of aluminum here so that will work pretty well I did go ahead and label these two so this is my Z max my X and then Y2 and Y and Y1 and those guys are powered on this little uh, strip here I, I just wired 24 volts to this guy here to get power and then I have my black wire going into the inputs so like I mentioned before this is X Y1 Y2 and Z so and these are all defined in the software you can kind of see the pin or the numbering on the other side of the pin, maybe not with the reflection. But all of these outputs, see so we got P10 through P15 here. All of these uh, pins on the board are defined in Linux CNC. So you guys will have to forgive me here. I don't have a way to screen capture my uh, Linux CNC desktop here. So uh, maybe I'll figure that out one day. But when you first start up Linux CNC here, you'll have this uh, e-stop button here you'll want to toggle that off and then you'll want to toggle on the machine power and that just enabled all of my drivers right here and as you can tell it, they are kind of uh, loud and annoying <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we now have power to the drivers and now we are free to start moving axes after we home so I have, I have it set up so that I have to home all axes before it will let me move the y-axis. And so if I hit home all, we will rehome. And so my setup here, we'll let that run for a minute. So that's my z-axis. You can set up your uh, sequence, uh, your homing sequence, which I think is awesome. So I have it set up so that my z-axis will home first. And then once my Z uh, limit switch will hit, hit my end stop. I gotta do it twice. Now it will home the rest of the motors. And so when I hit home, it'll home my Z axis all the way up. And then it will home my X and Y axis at the same time. So the motors are looking for that limit switch input, which will be right here. We'll do the, uh, the X axis first. And Remember, a lot of these motors will, will come in, they'll hit, and then they'll back up and then hit again at a slower speed. So that's what I have to simulate here. So they hit the first time there, and then the second. Same with Y2. And then Y1.
so now this the the homing sequence they call it is all set up in your you have a, a HAL file and an INI file and these are the only two files that I've messed with so far uh, there is probably another custom HAL file that you can mess with but I want to the the, uh, the the HAL file and the INI file are the only two that I've uh, modified to to get what I have here so this will just kind of be a basic uh, setup how to get your motors turning and then I hope that you guys can kind of take this information from here and run with it and and get your, your speeds set up for your machine your uh, your units if you want to change units and you can get uh, you know everything set up to do what you want to do you know I, I know a lot of people might be uh, a little intimidated by Linux but you know so far I've just modified some text files changed some zeros to ones uh, you know commented some things out which is is very uh, um, I don't know if uh, rudimentary is the word but you know it's it's something that anyone anyone with some comp computer knowledge can do you know if you've gotten this far then you'll have no problem with Linux CNC so I'll try to show you what those files look like here so I'll give you guys an idea of what uh, the INI and the HAL file look like so these are these are made for you when you go through the uh, configuration and you know there is a lot of text here but don't be intimidated by it like you know uh, this isn't uh, you know rocket science here so there's a, a lot of documentation on this and you know we're just changing some numbers around we're doing zero to one type of thing so uh, you can see here my axes are labeled here so my for example my z-axis in the home sequence I want that to be first so that's gonna be a zero and then I want my x and y axes to be next so then my sequence will be one negative one and negative one and the negative one means that they're synced together because I have two motors on one uh, axis here so I got to recording this guys and I think I think the best way to do this is uh, I'm gonna get a schematic made of my and my entire setup here that way you guys can see this whole setup on paper and then what I'm going to do is get my INI and my HAL files here. I'll get these cleaned up. I'll put a lot of comments in here so you guys can kind of see what I've changed and what I've added. And then uh, I'll, I'll have these available for download in the description. And then that way you guys can go through and see what everything means. So I think that's going to be the best way to do it. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of talking. Uh, to be clear, I have not edited a whole lot of, of this here after the initial setup. But but uh, there are a couple things that you will need to change. So again, don't be intimidated by it. This is all pretty uh, straightforward stuff. So I think we're going to call this good, guys. Uh, if you learned something awesome, um, I'm really enjoying making these videos. So if you uh, if you want, feel free to subscribe, and we will uh, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.